Hello everyone. Welcome to our third portion of chapter 16. Um, today we are going to work through examples on how to determine the pH of solutions of acids and bases. So these are the four steps that I'm going to be working through with each problem that we do. So step one is determining if the species are a strong or a weak acid or base. Step two, we're going to write the reaction that is occurring and the K expression if applicable. Step three is find the equilibrium concentrations of the hydronium ion or of the hydroxide ion. And then step four is to find the pH. Note, we might have to calculate the pOH before we can do this. Okay, so in our first example, we want to figure out what is the pH of a 0 0.01 molar HClO4 aqueous solution. So this means that HClO4 is dissolved in water. That is what aqueous means. So the first thing, step one, is that we have to identify what kind of species HClO4 is. So we want to know HClO4. Is it an acid or is it a base? Well, this has a H out in front. And so based on our definitions, we know that this is an acid. The next question we have to ask, is it a strong acid or is it a weak acid? Now, HClO4 is one of the six strong acids that we have to memorize. If you don't know this list, go back to the first video of this series. So we now know that HClO4 is a strong acid. So step two of our problem solving process is we need to see how HClO4 interacts with water. So I have HClO4 and I'm going to add it to water. And since it is a strong acid, it disassociates completely. And so that means that it forms H3O plus and ClO4 minus. Now, step three is to find the concentration of H3O plus in this solution. Now, since we have a single arrow, in this example, we can do stoichiometry. So the single arrow tells us stoichiometry is the approach that we can take. So to do, the, to do stoichiometry, we are going to need to find moles. Now, remember that molarity is equal to moles over the volume. And so the moles of something is equal to the molarity times the volume. Now, in this problem, we were not given the volume of the solution. And so what we can do is we can choose a volume and it will not affect the results of this, of this problem because during the course of this problem, we're not going to change the volume. And so for this problem, we're going to say that our volume is equal to 1.00 liters. So our moles of HClO4 is going to be equal to our 0.01 moles per liter, our molarity, times our volume, which is 1.00 liters, which is equal to 0 0.010 moles of HClO4. But that's not what we want. We want to find the concentration of H3O+. So to do this, we are going to need to do our stoichiometry based upon our reaction to convert from moles of HClO4 to moles of H3O+. And so based on the reaction, we know that there's one mole of HClO4, 
When it reacts, it forms one mole of H3O+. So from this reaction, we get 0 0.010 moles of hydronium ion. Now this still doesn't answer our question because we want to find the molarity of the hydronium ion. And so to do that, we can, we can divide by that total volume, which we already said was one liter. So the concentration of H3O plus is going to be equal to 0 0.010 moles divided by 1.00 liters, which is the same thing as 0 0.010 molar H3O plus. Okay, so now step four, we have to find the pH. Now we know from the second video that pH is equal to minus log base 10 of the concentration of H3O plus. And so our pH in this case is equal to minus log base 10 of 0 0.010 molar. And so our pH is equal to 2. And we have now answered the question. So this is how we do it whenever we have a strong acid or a strong base and we have this single arrow situation going on, which means that we get to do stoichiometry. So in the next example, we're going to walk through what happens if we do not have a strong acid. So our next example is what is the pH of 0 0.010 molar acetic acid in a solution of water? And in this problem, I'm given the Ka of acetic acid. So step one is identify the type of species that acetic acid is. So acetic acid, acid or base? Well, its name is acetic acid, but there's also this hydrogen at the end. Um, acetic acid looks something like this, where I've got my CH3, my carbon, and if we remember, this part is the carboxylic acid. And so this hydrogen is acidic. It is, so acetic acid or vinegar is an acid. Now we have to know if this is strong or weak. Well, two ways of figuring this out. One, is that it is not one of our six strongs. The other is that it has a Ka. Strong acids and bases do not have a Ka or a Kb. So strong acids or bases, no Ka or Kb because they don't form an equilibrium. And so acetic acid, we have a weak acid. So step two, we have to write out the reaction that is happening with water. So I have acetic acid plus water, and we've already decided that it's an acid. And remember that acids give up their protons. So the, lone, so the water is going to act as a base. It's going to take that proton leaving me with H3O plus, plus CH plus the acetate ion, CH3COO minus. I also, in this step, need to find the Ka for this reaction. And in this reaction, the Ka is 1.75 times 10 to the minus five. That's given to us in the problem. Okay, so now, Step three 
is that we have to find the equilibrium concentration of H3O plus. So step three is find the concentration of H3O plus. And since we have an equilibrium reaction, we're going to try to find this equilibrium concentration. So to do that, we to do that, we have to set up an ice table. So we have CH3COOH plus water is in equilibrium with H3O plus plus acetate. And we're gonna set up an ice table. Now remember that concentrations go in ice tables. So I have 0 0.010 molar of this. Water is not involved and I have no hydronium and no acetate initially. And so since I have no products, I already know the direction that my reaction is going to shift. I'm going to lose reactants and I'm going to gain products. And so my equilibrium is 0 0.01 minus x, x, and x. So I can set up my equilibrium expression as Ka is equal to the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of the acetate divided by the concentration of the acetic acid. And so we can set this up as 1.75 times 10 to the minus five is equal to our concentration of H3O plus times our acetate over our concentration of acetic acid. And I can plug in from my ice table so that I get X squared over 0 0.01 minus x. And if I solve out the quadratic or I make the approximation, I find that x is equal to 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. And this is equal to my concentration of H3O plus at equilibrium. So now the P, whoops. So now we are ready for step four, which is find the pH. And so we know that pH is equal to minus log of the concentration of H3O plus. And so for this example, pH is equal to minus log of 4.1 times 10 to the minus four, which is equal to 3.4. Okay guys, so I am going to work through two more examples. If you feel like you've started to get the hang of this, I would encourage you to do the examples yourself when I show them to you. Pause, see the example, pause the video, try it, and then check yourself. Um, check your process. Fast forward through my video and see what you end up getting with each step and see if you can do this by yourself, okay? And I'm, I know that this video is gonna start getting long, but this is really just so that you have lots of different examples. So guys, I just discovered that I have some mistakes on my, on my next slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here and I'm going to make another video with the next two examples, which is gonna be working through figuring out the pH of solutions of bases. So um, go to your book and try some problems with weak acids that look like these examples that I just did um, and see how you do and use this video to look back um, for your process and to check yourself and then tune in for the next installment
for looking at how to find the pH of solutions of bases, both strong bases and weak bases. Thank you. Um, know that I have lots of office hours and I'm here to help.